Hello students, today in this lecture I am going to explain accessory glands and external genitalia of human female reproductive system. In the previous video I have explained the sectional view of human female reproductive system that is showing various ducts and as well as the ovaries. So, if you want to study that you just press the link given below in the description of this video. Now, let us move into the topic. The accessory glands, it includes there are two types of accessory glands, one is mammary gland, another one is vestibular gland. Now, we will study about the mammary glands. As you know, presence of mammary glands is the characteristic feature of all mammals, but these mammary glands are functional only in humans and why these glands are considered as accessory glands? Because in the mammary glands the synthesis and as well as the secretion of milk takes place that is very essential for nourishing the baby or infants after delivery. So, if we take the sectional view of mammary glands and here you can see mammary glands are generally situated in the thoracic region just before a muzzle of our chest called pectoralis major. This one is the pectoralis major muzzle. And this sectional view also shows the ribs and as well as the muscles present between the ribs. So, these muscles we can also call as intercostal muscles. And here the mammary gland is generally semi circular uh, in uh, shape and each mammary gland is made up of around 15 to 20 mammary lobes. And here in the diagram you can see I have just given around 4 mammary lobes this one is one mammary lobe, but generally around 15 to 20 mammary lobes are present. Uh, they literally if you take they are radiating starting from the tip to the end like this. And each mammary lobe is made up of many sac like milk secreting structures. These sac like milk secreting structures are called as mammary alveoli. You can see here these are mammary alveoli. Actually the mammary alveoli, the development of mammary alveoli takes place around during the middle of the pregnancy. At the end of the pregnancy mammary alveoli is uh, alveolus, it is singular, alveoli is the plural. At the end of the pregnancy mammary alveolus is somehow fully developed and there is secretion of milk takes place. And inside the lumen of the mammary alveoli, the milk which is secreted, that milk is stored. And here you can see from each mammary alveoli, a small duct will arise, a small tube that is called as mammary tubules. Mammary tubules are the structures to which mammary alveoli are connected. So, you know here. In the diagram which I have just mentioned in the white chart base. So, these are the mammary tubules and various mammary tubules you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tubules inside this mammary lobe and various mammary tubules joins to a common duct. That common duct is called as mammary duct. So, you have to remember it is the common duct to which various mammary tubules attached. Right. And you can see these mammary ducts at its tip it is dilated, sulpa enlarge higirute. So the dilated portion of mammary duct is called as mammary ampulla. So, mammary ampulla it is dilated portion of the mammary duct. And notably, the mammary ampulla actually the function in right? after secretion of the milk inside the cells of the alveoli. Right? the milk reach to the lumen of alveoli. From the lumen of alveoli, milk enters into the mammary duct through these mammary tubules. And that milk before ejection and the baby 
milk anna kudiyakinta munche suck madakinta munche that milk is stored in this mammary ampulla next is the latissimus duct you can see here from each mammary ampulla a narrow duct will arise and all these narrow ducts which are generally accumulated in the nipple of the mammary gland so these latissimus ducts are the narrow ducts that arises from mammary ampulla and you can see there are many latissimus ducts will be there in this region so this region or the tip of the mammary gland is called as nipple and here this nipple it is generally a uh, surrounded by a glandular area so this area this portion you can see here pinkish uh, glandular area where more sebaceous glands will be there that pinkish glandular area present around the nipple is called as areola so this one is pinkish glandular area present around the nipple where more sebaceous glands will be there that generally provide lubrication for uh, sucking of uh, milk for the baby isn't it and finally one more thing that you have to remember here the mammary gland also have variable amount of fat in some mammary in some individuals there is very less fat in some uh, females there might be more amount of fat or adipose tissue so you can see this thing that i have just mentioned in the dotted structures and this one is the fat so this is about the structure or anatomy or sectional view of human mammary glands okay now the next concept is the external genitalia and the vestibular glands in human females the external genitalia is also called as vulva this external genitalia it has the various structures like mons pubis clitoris labia majora labia minora and as well as the vestibular region so first of all if you take the mons pubis so mons pubis is the cushion of fatty tissue that is covered by skin and pubic hairs and from so this mons pubis is generally covered by skin and as well as the pubic hairs even uh, uh, only during after puberty only you can uh, hear the pubic hairs are uh, formed right so the next one is labia majora labia majora are the two fleshy folds of skin with fatty tissue that actually arises from the mons pubis and extend backward like this and this labia majora is also partly covered by pubic hairs that is after puberty and this labia majora under the labia majora there are again two more small fleshy fold of skin generally that is called labia minora but here labia minora is thin and small when when compared to the labia majora this labia minora is present under the labia majora like if if the labia majora is like this under the labia majora labia minora is present so labia minora are also two thin fleshy fold of skin present under the labia minor majora right so this labia minora at its anterior end so where both the labia minora arises at its anterior end it has a hood like structure called as clitoris so clitoris is the hood like structure present in the anterior end of labia minora right so this clitoris is generally protected by fold of skin that is called as prepuce this prepuce it is generally homologous to foreskin of male external genitalia like in males 
pin is the two glands pin is it is surrounded by the foreskin and even the clitoris it is also erectile tissue this clitoris is also homologous to the penis of male and you have to remember labia majora it is homologous to the scrotum of male and finally the labia minora it is homologous to pineal uh, urethra of male which protect generally the urethra and as well as the vaginal orifice and the labia minora at its posterior end or towards the back side it generally both the labia minora fuses and they produces a structure means uh, a frenulum that frenulum like structure is called as forchet and the labia minora it encloses a cleft so that cleft is called as vestibule so vestibule is the cleft like structure generally enclosed by labia minora right this you have to remember and vestibule is a region where it is a common area you can see this area under this labia minora this area is called as vestibule vestibule is a common place where both urethral opening and vaginal orifice is present but one thing you have to remember in human males urethra it is a common passage for both semen and as well as for urine hence that is called as urinogenital duct but in human females urethral opening is different from the vaginal opening so both urinary tract and vaginal uh, means uh, urinary tract and reproductive tract do not uh, have a common passage both are having different passage so we cannot call the female urethra as urinogenital duct it is not urinogenital duct and finally when we take the urethra it is generally present towards the upper end that is towards the anterior end the urethral opening through which urine is released and vaginal opening also called as vaginal orifice this vaginal orifice is generally present towards the backward or towards the posterior end of this vestibule and, uh, and the final point you have to remember the region where the both labia majora disappear towards the posterior end that region which is present between the anus and the end where labia majora disappear that portion is called as perineum and this is finally it is the anus and let us discuss about the vestibular gland so these vestibular glands are the glands which are present in the region of the vestibule vestibule regionally e glands irutte erad rite vestibular glands barutte one is lesser vestibular gland and another one is greater vestibular glands ಈಗ ಲೆಸ್ಸರ್ ವೆಸ್ಟಿಬ್ಯುಲಾರ್ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ತಗೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಯುರೆತ್ರಲ್ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯುರೆತ್ರಲ್ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ನ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ಸರ್ ವೆಸ್ಟಿಬ್ಯುಲಾರ್ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಸ್ಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಗ್ಲಾಂಡ್ಸ್ and these skin's glands are generally homologous to the prostate gland of male and they are responsible for the uh, producing a lubricating fluid and just like lesser vestibular gland greater vestibular gland also mainly involved in the production of lubricating fluid which are also called as bartholin's gland so they are paired structure you can see they are situated on either side of the vagina and found in the labia majora their ducts open into the wall of vagina that you have to remember so these glands secrete uh, the lubricating fluid they are very essential that is very essential for insertion of penis or for uh, the sexual intercourse that is about the lesser and as well as greater vestibular gland and finally most important thing that you have to remember the vaginal orifice it is partly surrounded by two folds of a mucous membrane and that double fold of mucous membrane which is very thin and delicate that membrane is called as hymen generally the hymen it may turn out during the first sexual intercourse and the married couples first time 
ಸೆಕ್ಷುವಲ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಲ್ಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಮೇಟಿಂಗಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪಿನಿಸ್ ಈ ಒಂದು ವಚನ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇನ್ಸರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಹೈಮನ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಟಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಟಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಮನ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಜಿನಿಟಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ರಿಲೈಯಬಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಜಿನಿಟಿ ಹೈಮನ್ ಇದೆಯೋ ಇಲ್ವೋ ಅನ್ನೋದು ವರ್ಜಿನಿಟಿ ಅಥವಾ ಸೆಕ್ಷುವಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ನ ಒಂದು ಇಂಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ವೈ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹೈಮನ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಟಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಏನಪ್ಪ ಆ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಯು ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಹೈಮನ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಟಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸಡನ್ ಜೋಲ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಸರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಜೈನಲ್ ಟಿಂ ಟ್ಯಾಂಪೋನ್ ಆರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸೈಕ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಾರ್ಸ್ ರೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಈ ರೀಸನ್ಸಿಂದ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಹೈಮನ್ನು ಟಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು so that presence or absence of hymen may not be the reliable indicator of virginity and even in some women in some females the hymen will not turn out even after uh, having the sexual experience or sexual intercourse so this is about the female external genitalia and as well as the vestibular glands and finally the mammary glands so remaining topics uh, remaining topic ena payide antandre so menstrual cycle hormonal regulation of menstrual cycle ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಊಜನಸಿಸ್ ಈ ಮೂರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನಲ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಓವರಿ ಇವು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸು ಒಂದೇ ಲೆಕ್ಚರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ ನಾವು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸನ್ನು ಒಂದೇ ವೀಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲೇ ನಾನು ನಿಮಗೆ ರಿಲೀ